So I wanted to uh, just talk a little bit more about what happens inside the ribosome, which has these two parts. Here's, here's another diagram um, with the messenger RNA. And it's showing uh, the code, the C, A, C, G, G, A. And it shows the, um, the T RNA, again, with a nice molecular structure, with the uh, code, the complementary code that matches down here, and the amino acid. And so the um, uh, different uh, uh, tRNA molecules come in on this side, and if they match the code, they go into the position right here, and as the, the messenger RNA comes through, the uh, uh, protein jumps from one tRNA onto the next one, adding uh, one more amino acid to it. And then this tNRA uh, diffuses away, and they're, they're more, this one likes the green amino acid, there are more green amino acids floating around, a new one attaches, and then it can um, participate um, within the ribosome. So one of the cool things about uh, the ribosome molecule and the whole assembly is that it has to uh, create an environment where the correct tRNA molecule comes next to the the mRNA and attaches and um, uh, flips the polypeptide or protein to the next one. So all of these different um, molecular structures are designed to accurately um, translate the messenger RNA into uh, the protein. And so each, each component of this is, um, the recipe for each component of this is stored in the, D, the organism's DNA. And so there's this really interesting um, process where through time and evolution, the complexity of the molecules and their efficiency have been selected for, that they've built up bit by bit over time. And in fact, we use some of the, the proteins within the ribosome to trace the evolution of life uh, through time because these proteins are really optimized uh, for the production of necessary parts of the cell. They remain stable um, through time.